We're at the 114th Colorado Mining Association Conference here in Denver, Colorado. We're with Mark Kudafani, uh, Chief Executive Officer for Anglo Gold Ashanti. Thank you for visiting with us today. Thank you for having me. Can you talk a little bit about the benefits of being involved with the Colorado Mining Association and what that does for Anglo Gold Ashanti? I think the Colorado Mining Association is a, is a good grouping of producers and industry uh, participants that looks to engage with government and other groups and looks to share information between the industry to, to improve the image of the industry and to help us work through the issues, issues that we have to confront as an industry with governments, with communities and other groups. So uh, very effective grouping. You talked a lot today about um, issues affecting the industry. How do you think the mining industry as a whole can work to improve its image to make sure that people understand what you all are doing? One of the things we don't do well is sell our message and talking about the things we contribute, how important we are to the economies, how, we important, how important we are in terms of producing products that make communities and societies function. I think we could do a lot better job in promoting ourselves in terms of that context. People often say, well, I don't want to mine or I don't want that sort of development in our backyard. But people forget that mining represents only 1% of the Earth's surface in terms of activity. So we're one of the smallest groupings of activities on the globe, but in fact one of the greatest value contributors for all of our global activities. So we're part of everything uh, and we need to do a better job in explaining how we contribute and how little impact we actually do have. When, when you go into these areas to start um, infrastructure and setting up infrastructure, what are you doing to talk to the communities prior to going in? Well, we, we try and engage at every level. So we try and engage federal authorities in terms of the overall regulatory framework, the regional authorities who have a whole range of different responsibilities in the regulatory process and with the local groups. So we have to understand the requirements at each level. Then we have to talk to, as part of that process, the local community members. Because at the end of the day, you may be able to satisfy all the regulatory requirements, which are quite often conflicting, but you have to actually create a, a, a relationship with the local community members who in the end are your local communities, your next door neighbours and to be good next door neighbours we want to make sure we understand everyone's requirements and try and fit in with all of their needs. Can you briefly um, expand upon what the mining industry is doing in terms of its environmental footprint and that people may not understand that you all are a part of? Well, there's lots of work going on making sure that water remains clean so that we don't pollute water sources, that we rehabilitate and, and uh, recover land that's been used for mining activities, return it back to either its natural setting or its agri agricultural um, uses in those communities. So a lot of thought goes into the way we start a mine. So literally, we have to start planning for closure from day one. So we plan for what the mine will look like in 20, 30 or 40 years time. And that's very different to the way things were done 100 years ago. And I think that makes all the difference because ultimately we talk about us disturbing less than 1% of the Earth's surface. And when we're finished, we'd like to think that you wouldn't know we'd been there. You, you brought up three key instances and issues that you were concerned about. Um, can you expand on those three issues and really um, talk to the fact that there are kind of some bad eggs within the you know, mining industry that make it hard for some of the others? Well, I think the first point I was making that less than 5% of industry participants are probably not doing the right thing, and like in most industries, are probably creating 80% of the negative headlines. So as an industry, as industry participants like the Colorado Mining Associate, we've got to come together and establish codes of contact and hold people accountable to those codes of contact. So that's whether it's at the international level, at the national level, or at the regional level. I think those peer groups are very important in either helping those groups do much better or calling them to account when they don't. And when you're, when you're out of favour with your peer group, you really do have a problem. I think the second thing is understanding how we can come together and develop more collective approaches with communities, with the local governments, in developing uh, new projects in a way that enhances society and helps local communities achieve their objectives for themselves, their children, and long-term development of those regions. I think we could do a much better job on that. And then third, I think the whole thing about selling our story to the community at large is the biggest challenge we face as an industry because not only are we the most important or critical industrial activity and have been for 5,000 years, we are the most important industry in facilitating a whole range of other industries like the agricultural sector providing fertilisers. We don't sell our message very well. 
Perfect. Well, thank you very much for spending some time with us, and we look forward to seeing more of you throughout the rest of the conference. Thank you.